Hey guys, how you going? Well, I've got some news. Uh, I went to the doctor yesterday and I asked for it, actually, and said, I asked the doctor, was hydroxychloroquine for inflammatory conditions? And she said yes, and I said, well, can I get that? And as a, as a thromycin as well. I was able to get a prescription for both. Um, unfortunately, I went to eight different chemists and then came home and rang another six until I found one that had it. Uh, so it is hard to get. But then I went to somewhere else today, another, another suburb, and they had just got restocked with it. So hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, and I've got zinc as well at home, just the normal vitamin zinc. Okay, I wanted to read this is from the International Journal of Antimicrobial Agents. Okay, they're using it on SARS-CoV-2 and COV-19 on respiratory viral loads. Now, listen carefully because you need to follow how they're doing it. This is how France and the other studies have been doing it. Okay, you are to receive 600 milligrams of hydroxychloroquine daily. Okay. Now, the hydroxychloroquine tablets are 200 milligrams. So you need to take three a day. It can be two to three a day. Okay, six patients were asymptomatic. 22 had upper respiratory tract infection symptoms and eight had lower respiratory tract infection symptoms. 20 cases were treated in this study and showed a significant reduction of viral carriage compared to controls and much lower average carrying duration than reported of untreated patients in the literature. Azithromycin, azithromycin added to hydroxychloroquine was significantly, significantly more efficient for virus elimination. Okay, its effective and its effect is reinforced by azithromycin. Hydroxychloroquine, an analogue of chlor chloroquine, has been demonstrated to have an anti-SARS-CoV activity in vitro. Hydroxychloroquine clinical safety profile is better than that of chloroquine during long-term use and allows higher daily dose and has fewer concerns about drug-to-drug -drug interactions. Our team has a very comprehensive experience in successfully treating patients with chronic diseases due to intracellular bacteria, Q fever due to Coxiella burnetti, and Whipple's disease due to that one. I'm not going to say it. You can read it. Uh, with long-term hydroxychloroquine treatment, 600 milligrams a day, for 12 to 18 months since more than 20 years. Okay, so you're going to see what this stuff can treat. Okay, patients were grouped in three categories. Asymptomatic upper respiratory tract infection when presenting with rhinitis, pharyngitis or isolated low-grade fever and myalgia and lower respiratory tract infections, LT, LRTI, when presenting with symptoms of pneumonia or bronchitis. The primary endpoint was virological clearance at day six post-inclusion. Secondary outcomes were virological clearance over time during the study period, clinical follow-up, body temperature, respiratory rate, long of stay at hospital and mortality and the currents of side effects. And I think most of the side effects that their media are showing you are from chloroquine, not hydroxychloroquine. 
because the hydroxy made it safer. Okay, for ethical reasons and because our first results are so significant and evident, we decided to share our findings with the medical community, given the urgent need for an effective drug against SARS-CoV-2 in the current pandemic context. Okay, the preliminary results also suggest a synergistic effect of the combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. Um, azithromycin has been shown to be active in vitro against Zika and Ebola viruses and to prevent severe respiratory tract infections when administered to patients suffering viral infection. That's important because a lot of doctors will say that Antibiotics only treat bacterial infections and not viral infections. This finding should be further explored to know whether a combination is more effective, especially in severe cases. Speculated potential risk of severe QT prolongation induced by the association of the two drugs has not been established yet, but should be considered. As for each treatment, the costs benefits of the risk should be evaluated individually. Further studies on this combination are needed, since such combination may both act as an antiviral therapy and prevent bacterial superinfections. Okay, and as for the azithromycin, each tablet is 500 milligrams, the ones that I got anyway. So 500 milligrams on day one, followed by 250 milligrams, which is half, per, half a tablet, per day the next four days. Now, I was prescribed hydroxychloroquine, one a day, and the azromythin, my doctor prescribed one a week. Now, how they're doing it is... The hydroxychloroquine, they are three times a day, and the azithromycin is a full tablet on the first day and a half a tablet for four days after that. And not forgetting the zinc. Okay, so this prevents bacterial super infections. Okay, and how they did this was one patient who was still PCR positive at day six post-inclusion under hydroxychloroquine treatment only received azithromycin in addition to hydrochloroquine at day eight post-inclusion and cured her infection at day nine post-infection. So the hydroxychloroquine on its own didn't do it fully until they introduced the azithromycin okay now this I will link this down below this is actually a government website it is actually worldwide health and I'll put the links down below that you can have a read for yourself I'm still a little bit unwell so I won't read this today but I do want to bring this information because I had to research it when I found out my doctor was saying that take one of one, one once a week and the other one once a day. It didn't, it didn't ring with me, so I thought I'd look into it. So I did, and this is what I have found. Now, I have noticed already that the swelling in my stomach has gone down. Uh, the kidney problems I've been having this morning... Uh, I realized it was a kidney stone and it was a big relief afterwards. Um, purely by accident, guys, by the way. I also, uh, my nose has cleared up. I had, I normally am a bit nasally, but my nose seems to have cleared up and the stomach pain that I was getting, I still had it this morning. And I started it yesterday afternoon, but I only had one dose yesterday afternoon of both hydroxychloroquine because it was so late. Um, today I've had two doses of hydroxychloroquine and one half a tablet of 
the azithromycin and one zinc tablet. The pain I normally get in my stomach can go for about seven hours. Um, and that's pretty much non-stop. It's like a wave. It's like minutes, a minute on, a minute off, a minute on, a minute off. Now, uh, today I had the pain and it was quite bad, but it came on and went off for about 10 or 15, 20 minutes and then came back. So I am finding a bigger already just since last night already a big difference if you can call it that so what I'll do is I'll keep you updated because I am my own guinea pig here uh, so <laughs> I'll keep you updated on how this is going as I said I'm still a little bit unwell but I think I'm getting better and you know keeping a positive mind too probably helps look if it's all mind over matter I'm happy with that even did you know that hydroxychloroquine although mainly used to treat malaria uh, is also used in dermatology now this stuck out to me too because I have something called morphia it's just a dry spot of skin and I had it diagnosed in 2000 in the year 2000 and they said it would go away within five years, and it didn't. Okay, so we'll see. So it, it does lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. You can read that one. Uh, polymorphic light eruption. Uh, you can read them because I honestly would get them all wrong, but look at that, morphia. Scleroderma. That's what I have as well. This thing's going to help me so much, guys. Oh, my goodness. And you can read them. I can't pronounce them, so I'm not even going to try and say this. Um, okay, but... I did read, you will read in the other one that I just showed you, the other um, article, that they did try it on pregnant women. It says down here, may not, should not be taken during pregnancy. We'll go on to the next. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. It has something about diabetics down there that it, has effects on diabetic medications, including insulin. And it may worsen certain diseases such as psoriasis. Um, but this is Dermacol, edu.au, okay? So maybe it has side effects on diabetic conditions because it does something to help, maybe? Although you think they'd tell you. But anyway, that was interesting to me. It just stuck out to me. So, Okay, this is hydroxychloroquine on Wikipedia. It's also sold under the name Plaquenil. Um, among others, it's used for malaria, um, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. I can't read that. And coronavirus. Okay. That's all the information. I'll, I'll put all these links down below so you can look at it for yourself. And uh, anti-malarial drug uh, used in the treatment of SLE. Effectiveness in treating APS is previously questioned. But it goes on to say that um, hydroxychloroquine has a positive effect on pregnancy outcomes with no significant drawbacks, but further tests are needed. Lupus, um, to lower fasting blood 
glucose concentration. Okay. I'm just going through it while I'm here. Oh, it's with people with SLE that recent evidence, although retrospective, also suggests that the addition of hydroxychloroquine in obst obstetric APS may improve pregnancy outcomes. Okay, so just be, uh, use your own gut feeling, your own discernment when you're looking at these things inflammation and joint disease so it also works on arthritis again um, the manufacturer's instructions advise against use in pregnancy and breastfeeding but data on over 250 pregnancies in women with connective connective tissue disease who are taking hydroxychloroquine provide evidence that treatment is safe in pregnancy and probably also during breastfeeding, but they'd probably need to do more tests on that. The musculoskeletal system is used for dermatological, muscul musculoskeletal. There you go. Wow. This thing does quite a lot, guys. And I just wanted to bring it to you so that you can... Just what I found so far, this is only what I did, just did a very quick look, and this is what I found so far. Okay, it, 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 it's been found to improve musculoskeletal symptoms, rash, and alopecia. Okay, so look, this may help people, and it doesn't, like, one way or another... See, Trump, I remember Trump looking at the camera or looking at one of the reporters who was talking to him and he said, you should try it. And it made me think that he was talking to the people. See, other inflammatory. Okay, so it is, is, it is an anti-inflammatory. And I think that's why my stomach went down. Okay, and it explains exactly how it works and everything, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these down below. But what I wanted you to know, the biggest thing I wanted you to know was the dosage. Okay, it is one hydroxychloroquine three times a day and one full azithromycin on the first day and a half tablet after that. Check the milligrams. And I also took, started taking zinc. Okay, just a vitamin. Zinc. That's what my doctor told me. That's what the Z-Pack was. Just zinc. Um, I just really wanted to bring this to you, even though I, I'm not quite well yet. But just in case any of you guys wanted to know what the dosage is, that's exactly what it is. Okay, guys, you take care. Stay safe. Stay calm. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.